Hi, I'm Jim Tompkins, and I like to tell the stories behind some of the greatest rock and pop songs from history. Today's song is Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. Born to Run was released in 1975 on Bruce's classic album of the same name. The song was easily his biggest song to date, hitting number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song has a few really interesting points to it. One is that the song was made while Bruce had his back against the wall and was in danger of getting dropped from his record label. Two is that the song was really difficult to make. A lot of time and anguish went into getting it just right. And finally, Born to Run is another great example of a perfect wall of sound record. So let's dig in and start with point number one. It's hard to believe now, but Bruce's stardom was in danger of never materializing in 1974 and 1975. He'd released his first two albums in 1973, Greetings from Asbury Park, and The Wild, The Innocent, and The E Street Shuffle. Those albums got very positive reviews and today are considered classics of the Springsteen repertoire. But back then, they sold very little. He'd been signed to Columbia Records with a lot of hype, but the people that signed him had largely moved on to other places. As Bruce said, I wasn't a feather in anyone's cap if I was successful. It didn't matter. So I was really kind of at the bottom of their barrel, and that took a while to get right again. What he was mainly known for at that point was his live performances. But outside of pockets of following in the Jersey area as well as Virginia and Texas, he just wasn't that popular. And within the industry, he was seen as a much-hyped Dylan-type singer-songwriter who had fizzled. But that would all change with Born to Run. It was in early 1974, and Bruce had been listening to records by Roy Orbison, Dwayne Eddy, and Phil Spector. He wanted to create a song that would have the Phil Spector wall of sound feel, but also be a simpler song not overburdened with long guitar solos or drum breaks. In short, he wanted to use a formula that would give him a hit song. One day at his house in New Jersey, he was playing his guitar on the edge of the bed, working on some song ideas, and the words Born to Run came to him. At first, he thought it was the name of a movie or something he'd seen in a car spinning around the circuit. He liked the phrase because it suggested a cinematic drama that he thought would work with the music he'd been hearing in his head. Next, he had the guitar lick, which was inspired by the twangy guitar sound of Dwayne Eddy. Some lyrics started to come to him, and the genesis of the song was Born. But Born to Run was no easy creation. From inception to the final finished version that appears on the album, it took him six months. The challenge was he had sounds in his head that he couldn't properly explain to the band or his co-producer Mike Apple. And it was the first song he wrote for a studio production rather than a live performance. Lyrically, he wanted to use the classic rock and roll images, the road, the car, the girl. In the opening lines, you can hear him invoke that favorite of his metaphors, the automobile as an engine of escape. The lyrics came to him slowly, over months. As Bruce later said, When I wrote this song, I was writing about a guy and a girl that wanted to run and keep on running, never come back. While the lyrics were being written, they struggled with the recorded sounds of the instruments, the drum sounds, the guitar sounds. They layered instrument upon instrument, mixing down and down, track to track, combining sections of instruments. I talked about the wall of sound effect that Phil Spector pioneered in the early 1960s that the Rolling Stones had employed on Gimme Shelter. Springsteen also went full wall of sound with Born to Run. The wall of sound technique is a full body of sound where in the recording you mix lots of different instruments together to create a full, rich sound. In a wall of sound song, you can't decipher all of the individual instruments, but they are there contributing to an overall feel. On Born to Run, the following instruments were used. Acoustic guitar, electric guitar, piano, Rhodes electric piano, organ, bass, drums, glockenspiel, saxophone, tambourines, and there's even a string section. Clarence Clemens is famous for his incredible sax solos on some of Springsteen's best records, and there is a legendary solo in Born to Run. But the saxophone is also part of the wall of sound and is actually present throughout the entire song. I also love the fact that there is glockenspiel in this great rock and roll song. The glockenspiel is a percussion instrument that produces bell-like sounds at a very high pitch.
If you listen closely, you can hear them supporting the main guitar lick in the song. After recording four versions at the low-budget studio where he recorded his first two albums, he moved to a higher-end studio to finish it, but he refused to release it until it was just right. As Bruce said, I wanted to craft a record that sounded like the last record on earth, like the last record you might hear, the last one you'd ever need to hear. One glorious noise, then the apocalypse. A total of 72 tracks were recorded, everything from stacking guitar licks on top of each other to an entire string arrangement. Co-producer Mike Apple said, It was like a rock anthem. It even had an orchestra. David Sanchez wrote all these parts for strings, but we didn't want the orchestra to come in too much. We just wanted a hint of it. If you're paying attention to it, you'll hear the orchestra come up. You'll hear a few little sonic lines that are audible, but they don't infringe upon the rock production at all. But they're there. A pre-release mix of Born to Run was made available to the public in 1974, well before the finished album was completed and released. That early version of the song, with a slightly different mix, was given by Bruce's manager to disc jockey Ed Skiaki of WMMR in Philadelphia, and he played it with Springsteen as his special guest on November 3, 1974. And within a couple of weeks, this version was given to other Northeast rock stations in New York, Boston, and Cleveland. It became very popular on these stations, which then led to older cuts from his first two albums being played, which then led to anticipation of the new album. But the song wasn't officially released at that point, and then sat as the rest of the album was recorded. And the album, in total, took Springsteen 14 months to create and finish. The problem is, when you're trying to create something perfect, it can never sound right. By the end, he'd gone round and round with it so much that he lost his confidence that it was any good. At one point, he even told the record company he didn't want to release it and threatened to take the band to New York's Bottom Line Club to make a live album. It was John Landau who finally convinced him he needed to just let go and release it. And the story of John Landau and his relationship to Springsteen is a fascinating one. John Landau was one of the producers of the album Born to Run. But at the start of the album, Mike Apple was both Springsteen's manager and co-producer. In 1974, John Landau was a music critic, and a fairly popular one, who'd written for Rolling Stone magazine, among others. After seeing Bruce perform at Harvard Square, Cambridge, he wrote a review in which he proclaimed, I saw rock and roll's future, and its name is Bruce Springsteen. Columbia Records would take that quote and use it relentlessly to promote Bruce, which Bruce ironically hated, partly because it added to the pressure he was feeling. As Bruce struggled with Born to Run, he called up John Lando, and Lando wound up getting involved in the album and ultimately becoming Bruce's manager. So this guy, who was a rock critic with apparently no experience as a manager and record producer, became just that. If you read Bruce's biography, Lando seems to be more a psychologist and advisor than anything else to Bruce, and is still Bruce's manager and mentor to this day. The song Born to Run was finally released the same day as the album, on August 25, 1975, well over a year after its inception. This version had the mix we all know today. It was Bruce's first worldwide release. As great as the song is, though, it wasn't a major hit. It peaked at number 23 on the Billboard 100 chart, which was easily his best effort to date, but still not a major hit. It was the album as a whole that got him more attention, and on October 27th, Time and Newsweek hit the stands, both featuring Bruce Springsteen on the cover. Music critic Robert Criscow took note of the Wall of Sound influence and called it the fulfillment of everything Be My Baby was about and lots more. Grail Marcus of Rolling Stone proclaimed, It's a magnificent album that pays off on every bet ever placed on him. A 57 Chevy running on melted-down Crystals records that shuts down every claim that has been made, and it should crack his future wide open. Although it wasn't a giant hit at the time, Born to Run is beloved by Bruce's fans and probably his most popular live song. Born to Run helped expand his audience immensely and is today considered one of the greatest rock songs in history. Here are some other interesting facts about the song Born to Run. Springsteen played this for the first time on May 9, 1974, when he opened for Bonnie Raitt at Harvard Square in Cambridge, Mass. This is the show John Landau attended when he famously wrote that 
I saw rock and roll's future, and its name is Bruce Springsteen. Highway 9 and Born to Run refers to Route 9 in New Jersey, which went through Springsteen's hometown of Freehold. In the line, Hemi-powered drones scream down the boulevard. A Hemi is the 426 Hemi engine made famous by Chrysler muscle cars. Drones in this context are automatons, the young men driving their cars up and down the strip without a thought to the future. In the history of the E Street Band, there are two primary drummers, Vinny Mad Dog Lopez, who played drums on the first two albums, and Max Weinberg, who took over on the Born to Run album and is still the drummer today. But on the song Born to Run, neither of them did the drumming. It was Ernest Boom Carter. That was the only Springsteen song he ever drummed on, because shortly after, he joined a jazz band called Tone with E Street piano player David Sanchez. A page of Bruce Springsteen's early lyrics for Born to Run, etched in blue ink on a notepad page, sold for $197,000 at an auction in New York in 2013. Springsteen was born to run, but when he settled, it was in Colts Neck, New Jersey, just 10 minutes from the hometown he grew up in. There are alternate mixes of Born to Run that are available, and they show some of the ways in which Bruce experimented musically. In one version, you can hear Clarence Clemens backing saxophone clearly. Legendary rock and roll producer and Beats Electronics founder Jimmy Eovine was the engineer during the recording of the album. The perfectionism of Springsteen had a big effect on him. Although at times the recordings went on so long he literally fell asleep, it taught him to believe as much in the record as the person doing it. One of the most emotional performances of Born to Run came at the Spectrum in Philadelphia on December 9, 1980, the night after John Lennon was shot and killed. Springsteen opened the show by saying, If it wasn't for John Lennon, a lot of us would be someplace much different tonight. It's a hard world that asks you to live with a lot of things that are unlivable. And it's hard to come out here and play tonight, but there's nothing else to do. The band then launched into Born to Run in a kind of catharsis. Steve Van Zandt had tears in his eyes, and Danny Federici hit his keyboard so hard he broke a key. 33 songs later, Springsteen closed the concert with Twist and Shout in tribute to Lennon. Bruce later said, Born to Run was a nice, romantic idea, but I realized after I put all those people in all those cars, I was going to have to figure out some place for them to go. And I realized, in the end, that individual freedom, when it's not connected to some sort of community, can be pretty meaningless. So I guess that guy and that girl out there were looking for connection, and I guess that's what I'm doing here. So this is a song about two people trying to find their way home. It's kept me good company on my search, and I hope it keeps you good company on yours. That wraps up the story of Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back soon with another analysis of a great rock and roll song.